So, to recall, uh, we, we wrote uh, a kinematic relationship uh, describing the contact, uh, the contact constraint, that is j two dot minus we transpose mu equal to zero. And we can we described the statics of the object. And we described the equilibrium of the hand like this. I can split this equation in two parts. The yeah, I can define the components of the contact constrained by the contact itself as sorry. On the hand, as j two dot, and I can define the constrained contact components on the object as g transpose. So let's consider this one. And uh, if I invert this. Uh, I get q dot equal to the pseudo inverse of the Jacobian multiplied by the twist of the contact points plus if uh, if uh, there is a null a matrix whose columns describe the null space of uh, j multiplied by uh, an arbitrary uh, vector alpha. So, 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 so see. Um, the, in the last uh, expression, yes. the inverse of the Jacobian? It's a pseudo inverse okay. because it's not guaranteed that it's uh, square. Mm. So this is the more general expression. And uh, yeah, if uh, there is an R space of j, the, the hand is said redundant. This means that if I impose a certain uh, twist to the object, I can get more solutions for the, for the joints. And uh, yeah, if so, if it's not uh, the empty that we have that our grasp is redundant. This means that I can get the same displacement for the contact points with different uh, values of uh, joints. This is the example, for example, in, a, in the anthropomorph anthropomorphic arm is a redundant structure because I can fix the position of my hand but I can get this position with different configuration of my arm. Okay, this is one property that I have to consider when I analyze the grasp. Let's now consider the second kinematics relationship. So, ni c c object. Okay, if uh, from this expression I get the, I want to extract the twist of the object as a function of the twist of uh, the contacts, I get. in the more general case, of course. Plus, if present, okay. 
Okay. In this case, what happened? Okay, let's analyze this relationship. And uh, yeah, when I have uh, the, the null space of the transpose of plasmatic matrix is not uh, uh, void, so if n the g transpose is different from the empty set, uh, the grasp is set indeterminate. And uh, practically, this means that the, cons the contact constraints are not enough to uh, constrain the object. For example, if I have two uh, hard finger points, a uh, grasp like this with hard finger, this uh, grasp is indeterminate because even if I lock the position of uh, the contact points, I have still a degree of freedom for the object. So the grasp is indeterminate in this case. And uh, it's interesting to observe that this depends not only on the number of contact points, but also on the type of contacts. Be because for example, here, if I use a hard finger contact model, my grasp is indeterminate. But if I use uh, a soft finger contact model, so if I use my finger pad to, to grasp, of course, <laughs> with a limit uh, by the friction, but I can lock also, I can lock the object. So if I use a soft finger, this is not indeterminate. If I use a hard finger, it is indeterminate. Now let's go to analyze uh, the, the static relationships. So first the more important that is this one and uh, let's try to evaluate the contact forces for a, that we have to, to apply to balance a, a given uh, external branch. So let's invert this. So we get that lambda is minus the pseudo inverse of the grasp matrix multiplied by the branch plus a matrix spanning the uh, null space of G <coughs> multiplied by an arbitrary uh, vector gamma. And uh, yeah, this is a very important uh, aspect because uh, yeah, when this uh, um, null space is not <laughs> void, The, gra the grasp is set graspable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the forces that I obtain uh, within uh, the null space of G are very useful because uh, when I invert the, this problem considering only the, the branch, I can obtain a value for the contact uh, forces that uh, uh, does not satisfy the friction constraint. We have seen that the, the contact forces are not free. They have to satisfy the friction constraint that they have to be to have a positive uh, um, normal component and uh, yeah and the tangential one has to stay to be enough uh, that uh, the total uh, contact force stay within the contact, uh, the friction cone. So this condition is not uh, easy to, to be satisfied if I have only this part of the solution. This 
part of the solution is then useful to guarantee that the contact forces stay within the friction uh, constraints. So we can divide the, the contact forces in two parts. The first part is uh, the external contact forces that are mm, given by the contact forces that I need to balance the external branch plus I have the internal contact force that I can use, I can regulate to guarantee that the contact forces satisfies the friction constraints. For example, if I have this simple grasp in which I have to balance a certain weight with two contacts. If I evaluate the external uh, contact forces, I get these two forces that are enough to balance the external weight. But these two contact forces are not enough because if I use, for example, um, a hard finger contact model, this, this condition is, uh, the, these forces are outside the friction cone. So I have to apply also another set of forces, for example this one, whose resultant is zero, so they are in the null space of G, but are necessary to keep the overall contact force inside the friction cone. Okay, so if uh, I forgot to draw a very wide friction cone, okay. if the green is the friction, friction cone, the red force allows, ha, <coughs> allow us to keep the contact force inside the friction cone. So when uh, the null space of matrix G is very important and uh, if uh, it's uh, different from zero, the grasp is said graspable. Uh, the last one is on the hand uh, equilibrium. So if I want to get the vector lambda from uh, the tau values, I get the transpose, the pseudo inverse of the transpose of J multiplied by tau plus the null space of J transpose multiplied by another vector delta. If the null space of uh, the transpose of the Jacobian is not void, the grasp is said defective. This means that I can obtain uh, different values for the contact uh, forces for the same actuation of the joints. Uh, from all these, uh, among all these properties, as I said, the more important and uh, on which most of uh, the grasp studies are based is this one, is the graspability and uh, in particular the study of the internal forces.